following documentary is about Emiliano Zapata. It talks about his ideologies, aims, and methods. On August 8, 1879, in Ananequilco, Mexico, Emiliano Zapata was born to humble beginnings. The son of a horse trainer, he grew up farming in a village under the Ejido system. He became active against the wealthy haciendas or plantations as they stole land from peasants and ended their way of life. Beginning in 1909, he became a leader for the peasant population of southern Mexico as he led protests against haciendas and even stole back and redistributed some of their captured land. Zapata was vehemently opposed to the dictator Porfirio Diaz who oppressed the Mexican peasants and damaged the Ejido system, supporting a takeover by the wealthy haciendas. Zapata supported Diaz's opponent, Francisco Madero, in 1910 in his bid to force Diaz out of power. Zapata accomplished this by using guerrilla forces to capture the city of Cuautla, and he closed the road to Mexico City, forcing Diaz to step down. However, Madero's moderate political nature was off-putting to Zapata as he felt as though proper steps towards having a government support its people would still not be taken by Madero. After Madero declared himself president in 1911, Zapata responded by crafting his Plan de Ayala, a declaration of the future he desired for Mexico that would define his career. It is a rallying cry for the revolutionaries that declares Madero unfit and outlines a plan to take a third of Hacienda land in Mexico and redistribute it to the people so they can return to their farming communities. Zapata then set out on a campaign of guerrilla warfare with his Zapatista followers over the coming years, burning haciendas, dividing land among the working class, and imposing taxes on the captured town. After Madero's assassination in 1913 by Diaz sympathizer Victoriano Huerta, Zapata again joined forces with a moderate presidential candidate in Vestuniano Carranza in an attempt to oust the former general. After their success the following year, tensions rose again between the moderates and Zapata's radicalism, with their revolutionary Pancho Villa siding with Zapata in the conflict. After years of fighting, Carranza eventually defeated Villa's forces and isolated Emiliano and his dwindling band of farmer fighters in 1917. Zapata was ambushed by Carranza's generals later that year and died at the age of 39. The following is a dive into the ideologies, aims, and methods of the influential Mexican reformist Emiliano Zapata. Emiliano Zapata was a leading figure in the Mexican Revolution beginning in 1910 to 1920. He formed, created, and led the Liberation Army of the South. He had a great following called the Zapistas. Zapata was a man of the people and was very involved in the lives of peasant farmers in Mexico. He was bound to fight for the agrarian villagers and their rights to the land from the haciendas. Emiliano Zapata had an ideology that was able to inspire many of the Mexican people. He was able to use his way of thinking and his ideologies to guide the Mexican people to take back their country from their oppressors. Emiliano Zapata was a socialist and also believed in agrarianism. His main goal was for land reform in Mexico, more land and equality for all. He also believed in a society run by its people. He did not feel the need of a government to run a people's. Zapata believed that the way of life should revolve around basic needs of people and farming. Emiliano Zapata was a ruthless leader that was committed to his ideals. He often did not support others because their ideals were not exact with his own. For example, he sided with Francisco Madero in becoming the new president and overcoming the current president Porfirio Diaz, because in Madero he saw an opportunity to promote land reform for the peasants. Emiliano Zapata never planned for Madero to stay in power because he believed that Madero's ideals and plans were not radical enough to change the way of Mexico in the way he envisioned. Madero did not fulfill the promise he made nor did he move in the direction that Zapata wanted. Zapata created the plan of Ayala, where he planned to show Madero was not fit and that they should have elections. He also pledged that the land would be returned to the farmers by the haciendas. His slogan was, Tierra y Libertad, Land and Freedom. Emiliano Zapata made sure to make his ideas very clear to the people in power, like Madero and Porfirio Diaz. They never truly acknowledged his ideals, and this is what sparked him to uniting a people and fighting against its government. 
As Zapata was a strong proponent of land reform and agrarianism, he wanted to retake the land that the wealthy had taken during the previous Mexican regimes. As the Mexican elite owned nearly all the land, it was clear why land would need to be redistributed. In the sixth article of the Plan of Ayala, written shortly after Madero proclaimed himself president, it is said, As an additional part of the plan, we invoke, we give notice, that regarding the fields, timber, and water which the landlords, scientificos, or bosses have usurped, the pueblos or citizens who have the titles corresponding to those properties will immediately enter into possession of that real estate of which they have been despoiled by the bad faith of our oppressors, maintain at any cost with arms in hand the mentioned possession, and the usurpers who consider themselves with a right to them will deduce it before the special tribunals which will be established on the triumph of the revolution. This was all part of Emiliano Zapata's desire to re-implement the Ejido system, where large communal tracts of land are farmed by many people instead of being owned by one powerful person or family. After Madero took office, it became clear that he could not bring any of Zapata's land reform plans to fruition, so the Zapatistas withdrew their support for him and the plan of Ayala officially withdrew the recognition of Madero as the president of Mexico. Zapata used guerrilla warfare strategies. They were not at all unusual from regular guerrilla strategies, such as peasants and farmers always carrying rifles around and controlling in and out of major areas against the government's will. Zapata's first immediate focus was on the elimination of Porfirio Diaz. To do so, he allied with rebel Pancho Villa and Francisco Madero, who lost the election against Diaz bitterly. They gathered an army to overthrow Diaz, and it worked. Soon after, Madero replaced Diaz as the dictator of Mexico and branched off of Zapata's original goal. Madero refused any sort of land reform and demanded Zapata to disarm. Zapata refused, retreated to the mountains, and returned later with the plan of Ayala and demanded more radical land reform. To complete his land reform goals, Emiliano Zapata prepared the plan of Ayala. Its main purpose was to push agrarian reform, but it also declared Madero as a traitor and incapable of returning the land. It also vowed to pay haciendas to return a third of the land to the Hitos. If the haciendas were not to cooperate, they would have their land taken away by force. Before Zapata's army kills Madero, Victoriano Huerta beats him to it. Huerta offered peace to Zapata and Zapata declined swiftly once again since Huerta did not comply with his ideal of agrarian reform. Zapata allied with Pancho Villa and Victoria Cranza to take Huerta down and succeeded once again in this alliance. Really, Zapata's methods were forming temporary diplomatic alliances to accomplish his goals until it comes to light that the others in the alliance do not conform with his ideologies and using guerrilla warfare to keep the government at bay.